Welcome everyone to this Dimensioning Rules tutorial. In this tutorial, we're just going to be talking about where dimensions go, as well as making sure we're following the dimensioning rules. So for our first part, we have this object in the corner here. We have the isometric, and then we have the top view, the front view, and the side view. And these represent the orthographic projection of this part. And let's go ahead and put all necessary dimensions on it. So I'm going to open this up and paint. And I usually start with the overall length, width, and height dimension. This is a three-dimensional object, so it needs to have an overall length, width, and height. So let's start with the height of the object. And I'm just going to draw this in red so you can kind of see it better. This is our height or length, however you want to depict it. Then we have that width of the object. So the width of the object is usually how wide it is. And this is our front view. So we're going to depict this as our width. OK. And then we have the depth of the object, or how far back it goes. So over here, this is how far back it goes. You don't need to draw anything on this view. But I just want to show you this line, because that's best represented if you're looking at the top or from the side. You can't really see it if you're looking at the front of the part. So if this is my top view, and I'm trying to represent this line, this line is this line over here. That's the depth, how far back it goes. So that is going to be what I'm dimensioning. If, uh, if paint lets me dimension it. OK, something like that. OK. So we got those three dimensions in place. Now let's work on a feature. So let's work on the circle. We know that circles are dimensioned via a leader line. So I'm going to draw in an arrow. It's always angled. And the feature is represented, the dimension, with the diameter symbol. Looks something like this. And then the diameter amount. So in this case, that is 2.5. OK. I'm going to try to get that off the part. OK. Now, we still don't know exact location of this circle. So we also need to dimension it from the center of the circle. Let's say that's our center. So we need to dimension it from the center of the circle to the side of the part. That's going to lock in one of our dimensions. And we also need to dimension it from the center of the circle. And yeah, usually I would not you know, have a line cutting through this part. Uh, to the bottom or top of the part. And notice how my overall dimensions are on the further outside skirts. So they're not in between or anything. So we have that dimension and we have this dimension. So this is locked in place. The circle can't move, and it's been fixed. OK, lastly, we have our arc over here. And we're going to, once again, use a leader line. Let me adjust that to represent our arc. And arcs are represented with R for radius, and then the amount. So in this case, the radius is 1. OK, so if we've added all this, this part is what we'd consider fully constrained. And all necessary dimensions are there. It took a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dimensions. Remember that we did not dimension to the hidden lines, because you're not supposed to dimension to hidden lines. You want to dimension to where the part is most visible, where the contours are most visible. So in this situation, this is good. Real quick question for you all. If this line here it has a total of six units, then the top line located up here, even though this is not necessary, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make it green so you can kind of see where I'm going at with this. From that point where the arc just ends to the edge of the part, what is the length of that line? If that is six and the radius is 1. 
And if you said five, then you are correct. And for those of you who aren't quite sure how I got five, this is an arc. Arcs come from circles. So at one point, this arc was a circle. And if this was the center of the circle, then we know a line leading from the center at any point has a radius of one. So this arc is a radius of one, but also from the side of the part to the center is also one. So one plus five is the total located down here, which is six. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, feel free to attempt the second one on your own. Otherwise, feel free to check out the next video. Okay, peace.